So look, we've all been there, right? One or more of your students is not ready for your studio recital and it's in less than a week. What do you do? Okay, does it kind of feel like we need to have like a dun 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 happening right now? Yeah, kind of. So look, I'm gonna be sharing three ideas that I use in my studio because without fail, there is always one student who isn't ready. So I'm gonna share my top three tips with you to help you out so that you don't stress out either. If we haven't met, I'm Rosemary Penner from The Unfinished Lesson, and I wanna have it all. I want a life where I can, you know, balance juggling work and family life with twins. I want to still have energy and time to actually be creative in how I teach. The Unfinished Lesson started as my way of helping other independent music teachers be able to do the same, to have balance in their life and creativity in their studio. Because guess what? You can have it all. Be sure to watch to the end of this video. I'm gonna be sharing two resources that are gonna help you get students recital ready fast. These tips and resources will help you turn around what could be really horrible and a complete epic fail on your students' part at the recital to something that's a great learning experience, but also that it makes them feel good about the work that they've put into their recital song. So idea one modify the song. Sometimes we underestimate how long it's going to take a student to learn a song. Sometimes they underestimate how long it's going to take to learn if they're really insisting, yes, I've got this. And sometimes life just happens. And sometimes we have students that just don't really practice and thought that the recital was going to change that. Spoiler alert, no. Students who don't practice before the recital rarely start practicing in time to master their recital songs. But regardless of the reason, there's no point in dwelling on it if your recital is a week or two out and your student still doesn't have the song ready. So this is my favorite option. Just modify the song. There are all sorts of things you can do. You can take chords and make them into chord bridges. If there's an arpeggiated pattern, can you make it simpler so that maybe it's just tonic, dominant, tonic instead of other notes that are in between? You could, instead of having students play octaves, just have them play the top or bottom note of those octaves. Those are super easy, quick fixes that, especially if you do a little experimenting within lesson, you can make it still sound really good and pretty close to the original without taking a lot that your student needs to do extra. Now, if there's a section that is really just, your student has genuinely been working on it and it's just not happening, see if you can take out the section. Now, sometimes we can't take out the whole section. Sometimes we can only take out part of it. And that's usually where those other two tips with this, within this idea really come into play. But I've done this before. I've checked to see if we could just cut out a complete section of the song and it worked great. Unless the song is so well known that every single person attending is going to know what it is, you can usually get away with this. Um, I've done this for Phantom of the Opera. Uh, one of my students was playing it and there was just one section left that Yes, yeah, she could have learned it, but it just wasn't going to happen in time. So played through it. Yep. Section before, straight through to the ending. You know what? Even she didn't really notice. And she knows the song really, really well. Um, sometimes it can be, you know, a video game song. They tend to be pretty repetitive. If you miss a section, chances are no one's going to really notice. Um, Video game songs tend to have something that's really memorable. And yeah, as long as you have that, you can probably cut out other stuff. So yeah, modify the song. This is absolutely the best option you can go with because it honors all the work that your student has already done in learning the song. 
it means that they can still play something that they like, but you're also understanding that they're not going to practice hours upon hours upon hours. And if they do that in your studio, that's awesome. Um, in my studio, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so modifying the song. Idea number two, provide extra resources. Now, hopefully we've been doing, or you've been doing this all along, but sometimes they just need a little extra. So for example, um, I really like using video and I will just do a very short video within lesson, especially a section that a student is not sure about, or we're just not gonna have time to do it in lesson, but I think that they can learn it on their own. We'll just do a video. Um, I use my overhead camera and then I can place it in their shared folder. The reason for this is a lot of our students turn to YouTube tutorials anyways. So why don't we embrace this? Because guess what? It's not about whether I can learn off of a YouTube video. Um, I can. It's not my favorite. It certainly takes a lot longer than just having the music in front of me. But for some of my students, that is the fastest way for them to learn something is to give them a video where they can see the keys lighting up and like they're golden. It's easy. Um, you can definitely let parents know when you've done this just so that it helps hold students accountable, especially if they're in that group that maybe didn't exactly practice a lot and now is kind of going like, oh, so practicing twice during the week wasn't enough? Um, no, it wasn't. <laughs> so just let the parents know. Um, it doesn't have to be like, make sure that they look at the videos, but just let the parents know, hey, in lesson today, we recorded a video. If you're in person, I would get the student to stand over your shoulder. I've had students standing on chairs, looking down over me, and that way it's on their device. If it's online lessons, especially if you record the lesson already, it's awesome. You just stop the recording, start it again, you know, stop it at the end of the segment and then continue on with your recording. It's the fastest way, it takes seconds. Um, and you're not giving up admin time as well, right? So you can provide a support for your student during the week without actually giving up more admin time because who wants to do that? Um, and it works really well. Um, I would also recommend, especially for students that maybe they're feeling a little overwhelmed and you know that it's gonna be repetition for them to get maybe this last little part learned. So I would recommend something like five ways recital prep activities. This is something that we use in my studio for every recital. It's great. Students can choose what activities they want so that it stays fresh. Um, and yeah, it just means that they can do little sections of the song in a way that it's different every time. And from what we know about brain research, the more different ways that we can practice something, the more it's going to stick in our brain. Um, gone are the days that we want our students playing the same section exactly the same time, or sorry, the same way a million times. That's actually how if they freeze up in the recital, they can't get the song back. So definitely changing it up, make it fun, make it interesting, and definitely do it in lesson so that your students can try it out with you there and you can provide the feedback and then encourage them to keep doing it during the week. All right, so idea number three, choose a song they've already learned. In other words, change the song. This is by far my least favorite option. However, if you've tried idea one and you've tried idea two and it still hasn't worked, then there needs to be a real conversation with your student and potentially their parent. So before you choose this option, um, keep in mind, it's disheartening for everyone. It's disheartening for the student because they've probably been cramming to learn the song that they wanted to learn for the recital. So getting told your cramming didn't work, it's disheartening. Um, rarely do they put the same energy level in performing with the 
backup song as they did they would have if they were playing the other song. It's not a great feeling for parents either, um, especially if they don't feel that you have supported their child, that you're just like, oh, well, wiping my hands of this one. And yeah, you just got to play something else. So that's why I really don't like it as an option. But you know what, if you have a hard conversation with your student, and I've done this with students, even in grade three, where let's talk about your practice. Did you practice the song this week? Well, I mean, I did right before lesson. Did you at any other time during the week? No. Did you look at the videos that I gave you? No. Did you um, choose to at least listen to the song so that it was running constantly in your head? Nope. Okay. So now we got to talk about what's going to happen. It's not a fun conversation, um, but students actually tend to be, in my experience, really quite honest about what their level of practice has been and what their responsibility or what their role in not being ready for the recital is. And again, this is really young students. I wouldn't have thought that originally, but I mean, they're pretty honest. So yeah, definitely ideas one and two, make sure you do those first. This one, sometimes it's what we have to do. All right, so I know that was kind of a downer, um, but it can be a real learning curve for some students. Sometimes we have students, and I know in my personal life, sometimes I've just had to learn something the hard way. Um, and you may choose not to use this one and say, you know what, you can perform at the recital anyways, knowing full well that your student is probably going to have an epic fail. And if you and the student are okay with that, I guess that's a, another option. But since we're working on students mastering a recital song, that one, let's call that one like plan Z. All right, so as promised, I have two resources that are gonna help you be able to help your students master these recital songs really, really fast. Um, I know that if you are watching this video, you're probably panicking a little bit um, that it's like one or two weeks out from the recital and you still have this student and you're like, I just want to help them succeed. So here's two resources to help you do that. The first one, it's an article on my site. It's called Help My Student Doesn't Have Their Recital Song Mastered. It seems like it fit the topic. So in that one, I go through some ideas that if you're maybe like, say, two weeks out, they can help you out a little bit more, but also ones where it's just down to the wire and it needs to be a yay or nay on whether or not this song is happening. Idea number two is, and I mentioned it in the video, five ways recital prep activities. My students love these. Um, I thought that for sure when I designed them that it would be my elementary students were the only ones using it. I actually have had junior high and senior high students use them as well. So uh, keep that in mind. You can always offer it to your older students. And if they want it, if they want something fun and lighthearted, then they can do these activities as well. Um, sometimes I think because our recital tends to be happening towards the end of a term, when a lot of our older students are doing like massive exams and, you know, end of term projects and things like that, they're already stressed out with school. So giving them a fun way to practice piano or whatever your instrument is, it just makes it a lot better for them. And there's a real fun reason for them to go to the piano. So hopefully that helps you out. So you're not going to want to miss the last video in this series. If you've been watching along, then you know that we've kind of covered how to plan a recital, how to get our students prepared, um, our last minute planning like we did today. And the next video, well, you're gonna have to subscribe to find out what it is. That one's coming up and it's actually a special one. It's a bonus video for this series.